Hi fans, please like our video and subscribe to the RotoWire channel. Then please go to rotowire.com slash pod for a free 10 day trial. Welcome to the award winning RotoWire Fantasy Basketball Podcast sponsored by BetMGM and Owner's Box. It's Friday, January 8th, 2020. Alex Barutha here with Ken K. Train Kreitz on the line. All aboard! Shannon may or may not be joining us. He has, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll call them personal issues to attend to, uh, which is what. Diaries. Yeah, which is every <laughs> everyone to me who has kids is dealing with personal issues. <laughs> uh, Reproduction is tough, man. I'm telling you. Uh, this podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, also YouTube. Now uh, we would appreciate a nice review on those platforms, whichever one you are consuming this on. We're doing a new format for the Friday Basketball Pod. Uh, we're anticipating that it will stick. We'll always start with news, and then we will go into uh, the waiver wire uh, every week, uh, especially this year. I think waiver wire will be more important than give ever. The people what they want. People want waiver wire, Alex. We got to do it. Yes, uh, and then uh, later in the show, the end of the show, we'll do DFS, and then all the usual shenanigans in between. Yesterday. The Nets beat the Sixers 122 to 109, despite not having Kyrie or Irving <laughs> or Kevin Durant. But, uh, Ken, there were a lot of highlights, or excuse me, headlines beyond the score. Holy smokes, a lot of news out of this game. Number one, Kyrie Flat Earth Irving not at game due to undisclosed personal reasons, reasons that the team is not aware of either. I think this is the second time. Nash, Coach Nash, did not know where Irving was and did not know why. He is not traveling with Memphis for ton tonight's game against the Grizzlies. Sorry, not traveling with the team to Memphis uh, for tonight's game. Last night, Karis LeVert started Thursday in Kyrie's place, saw 32 minutes, 25 shots. Uh, what are we looking at points-wise? Sorry, he had... Uh, big game. Yeah, big game. Big Big, big game. Uh, and, 22 uh, points. 22 yeah, he points, wasn't so. he wasn't especially efficient. 22 points and 25 shots, but he got 50 fantasy points, so he was he was out there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, anyway, uh, so big news, and we really don't know what's going on with Kyrie. Uh, not too surprising. Uh, this was bound to happen at some point in the season. Uh, well, well, I. Again, I don't know what to say right now because we just don't know. Uh, if you're playing fantasy, if you're playing DFS, we'll get to that later. But obviously, Karis LeVert being the main guy there. Joe Harris had a great game as well. Uh, Chris Chioza. Yeah, we got Chris Chioza, Timothy Luabu Cabarro. Um, but also, um, in this game, which is probably the bigger headline, and I think has, I don't want to say, yeah. like, not gotten the attention is deserved but it will it will all day i'm pretty sure but yeah go ahead yeah so seth curry was out due to an ankle injury and he was sitting on the bench and mid game uh they realized that he was had tested positive for covid-19 uh which Ew. was yeah not a not a great situation uh they pulled him off the bench he they put him in a separate room which i assume was some sort of like locked closet and then once they figured out what to do with him they shipped him off uh to Bad god curry. knows where Bad curry. Yeah, who who knows where he is right now? <laughs> uh, I assume he'll emerge uh, in like tattered rags, not knowing where he was for the past two weeks or however long. Um, so the NBA is working through contact tracing right now. The 76ers as a team are quarantining in New York. Um, it sounds like Brooklyn, surprisingly, just was able to get on the plane and go, uh, which that was kind of shocking to me. Because Curry didn't play? I assume. Yeah, but Curry sat next to Sam Cassell, who is talking to Embiid, who played. So yeah. uh, we'll see what that uh, we'll see what happens there. But Philly is scheduled to play Denver uh, Saturday, which is tomorrow. Um, that game, I per, for me, I would consider that game in question. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think we could easily be looking at. Well, this could be the precedence. This could be yeah. the. What's going to happen if a team has X amount of players? You know, I mean, we Boston's going to play tonight, right? We know they've got three players out. How many players 
out means no game or rescheduled game? Uh, I think you need eight available players, if I remember correctly, which is the situation Houston was dealing with. So I think I think this... way, and the two the two way contract guys are traveling with teams now, right? Um. So I think if they if the team decides they want them active, then they'll come join the team. Okay. But so the G technically League technically they're at seventeen. G League hasn't started yet, right? Yeah, G League is gonna do a bubble, so I'm not really sure how that will work once things uh kick off there. But uh for Philly, we could be looking at a Houston type situation where Houston only had like eight guys available for that stretch. Um so keep an eye on that situation because that's obviously huge for waivers, which we'll touch on later in the show. But the seventy sixers play five games this week. So if any amount of significant players are out, um, that's going to lead to a whole bunch of waiver wire claims for this week. Um, oh, including, don't, don't, give away, don't give away too many of our goodies. from the, I uh, won't. <laughs> uh, I, should, I should especially mention that Joel Embiid is being, he, he came out and said he's being especially cautious because he has, uh, I think, a young child, less than a year old, and he wants to be 100% sure. So if you have Joel Embiid, keep that in mind. But, Ken, how does, I mean, Philly lost badly here Ugh. to a Brooklyn team missing Kyrie and Durant. Yeah, it, well, you know, it won. It heats up the hardened trade rumors, right? Uh, who was doing color commentary for NBA Network on the game? He was making that big deal because Simmons, like, set one vague pick for Embiid. Was it Weber? And he was like, wow, they're suddenly playing great together. It's like, that was one play, you know? <laughs> the rest of the game, they're still bumping into each other, having spacing problems. Uh, I'm not a Weber fan, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, well, well, it says a few things. One, this Brooklyn team is deep. Uh, Joe Harris, I, I get why they move Harris to the bench because if Levert's going to get inserted, they need a scoring leader on the second squad. I do think when Irving and Durant are healthiest, Harris games fit Harris's game fits best with those stars because he can catch and shoot, but, uh, it's a very deep team. I like Joe Harris a lot with this lineup. Uh, but for Philly, yeah, it's like, oh, they still don't fit that well. I do like Shake Milton getting starting minutes last time only because Curry's out. I like Curry playing a lot. Um, but I don't know. I have never been sold on Embiid and Simmons playing well together. And I feel like last night was kind of yet another example of it. Simmons shooting four of 13 from the field last night, five TOs, Embiid five TOs. And part of those TOs is they don't. You know, they Doc Rivers, just like uh, Brown before him, it's hard to set up plays that work when all these guys need to be in the key. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, you know, there's uh, I was listening to the Ryan Rosillo podcast and he talked to a couple scouts about the uh, Jalen Brown versus Ben Simmons. And a lot of this uh, one of the scouts main points was. Ben Simmons doesn't work that hard on his game during the off season. And that's like something that's been obvious well, through the stats, but, and what's yeah. the, what's the easiest, uh, what's the easiest thing to work on in the off season shooting, shooting right? <laughs> right. Like yes, even you and I work on shooting in the off season, <laughs> right? <laughs> we don't have an NBA contract, you know, like, yeah, Brown has an outside shot. It's right. not rocket science, you know, Ugh. that's Philly, interesting that they're saying Simmons doesn't work that hard. Well, he's always take, been able to take his size for granted, you know, know as a giant ball handler but yeah yeah philly's getting by right now through their defense they have the second ranked defense in the nba uh as of right now but the 13th ranked offense uh so i think there's definitely a ceiling on what that philly offense can do and simmons plays great defense doesn't help your fantasy oh, too yeah. much but simmons does play great defense simmons is a defensive player of the year candidate despite his flaws on offense so, speaking of COVID-19... Yeah, I was say, uh, take us to Denver. We got more, more COVID issues, sir. Michael Porter Jr. Uh, to face a, uh, another 10 to 14-day quarantine period after recently finishing his seven-day quarantine. He was assumed to be playing in last night's game and then was, like, on the injury report is questionable, so everyone's like, what's happening here? And then this news comes out. You know, I hate to be Mr. Negative, but I am not surprised Porter may have made some bad choices regarding safety protocols. Porter said in July on Snapchat, when asked if the coronavirus was being overblown, it was a long quote. I'm just going to read the first sentence and the last. He said, personally, I think the coronavirus is being used, obviously, for a bigger agenda. But it is a serious thing. It's a real thing. But, yeah, this is being overblown. We know Porter lacks maturity. 
uh, maybe someone who could have used a year or two in college before going pro. Um, this doesn't shock me. I kind of had him and Kyrie on my list of guys who uh, are probably not going to follow safety protocols as well as they should. Uh, and uh, it's a shame. Uh, Fantasy-wise, it gives Will Barton, uh, who's healthy again, and Jamichael Green a boost in value. You know, everybody had Porter on their uh, breakout season charts. Uh, I don't know what to say. Alex, help me out here. It's tough. I mean, you you don't really want to, like, heading into the year, you didn't want to say, oh, I don't necessarily want to draft these guys or I do want to draft these guys because of how I think they perceive the, uh, the legitimacy of coronavirus right, and right, stuff right. like that, um, especially because it would affect you know, the whole team potentially is just, it's, it's tough, but this, I mean, I mean, there, there's the really main thing to say is this sucks. If you have Michael Porter on your team, <laughs> yeah, right, right. like it just sucks. And you know what? I can't assume he's just walking around without a mask. He may, plenty of people get the virus to take every precaution they should. Yes. Uh, it's all just percentage plays, but yeah, for yeah. fantasy, man, this sucks. Cause you're probably banking on him for 19.7 rebounds, bunch of threes a game. Yeah. Right. Uh, hey guys. Hey, hey. hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Um, yeah, it, this just kind of uh, highlights how odd of a season this is going to be for everyone. You know, even uh, it, a little thing like managing a fantasy team uh, is not going to be easy given the current landscape of everything going on in the world. And, you know, you just have to deal with it as a fantasy owner. I've got Porter Jr. in a few places. Um, obviously, uh, I was hoping that he would return to for last night's game, actually. So I rolled the dice, the dice, and uh, started him in one of my leagues because I really didn't have any other options. Um, but yeah, now you just you just move him to the bench. If you're in a shallower league, I, it's you had to be in a pretty shallow league for me to consider dropping him. Um, for now, I just kind of you know take the additional ten to fourteen day quarantine, put him on the bench, and try to find a good replacement. You know, maybe. At a higher fantasy level, let's not get into the whole life issues, but uh, maybe this is a year where those quantity for quality trades isn't so bad to get quantity, meaning you need a quality bench this year uh, because the the news this season could be nuts all season long. Yes. You're going to need options. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's different. It's different than the bubble. You know, it, it's going to be different than what we saw during that you know, four week, five week stretch. Uh, it's but Traveling. you just have to deal with it. Yeah, with travel and everything involved. But uh, as a fantasy owner, you just have to deal with it. All right, Ken, what's what's going on in New York? Is there a return <laughs> of the Mac? Of, what's, speaking yeah. of bench moves, the Knicks bring back Todd Gibson for a third dance with Coach Thibodeau. Guys, should Mitchell Robinson owners be worried? Gibson got a lot of starts. In fact, way too many starts for New York last season. I think Mitchell Robinson owners um, should always be worried. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, he played, I mean, uh, he's been playing well this season, right? He's 30 minutes a game. He played 41 minutes Clearly last game starting over Noel against yeah. Utah. Yeah. Um, I think this might be more to let uh, Julius Randall sit on the bench for like five minutes a game. Cause that's not really happening right now. Randall, <laughs> I think is leading the league in minutes played. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I wouldn't really be worried about too many guys. I mean, I think if I think Gibson would mostly take minutes from Noel and honestly Julius Randle, um, but we'll see. I yeah, I don't expect Gibson to be uh, Gibson to me uh, is the like a de facto coach in a uniform, uh, uh, an assistant coach in a uniform. That's right. why I think they brought him in, like Juwan um, Howard's Miami Heat days. Yes, exactly. I, I mean, the, he only he's it's his age thirty five season. He, he knows he Thibodeau's for, system inside yes, and out. Exactly. He he's played for Thibs on multiple teams. Um, he only played Gibson only played uh, sixteen and a half minutes per game last year. Uh, six points, four rebounds. Um, I really do think he's going to be more of like more of an assistant coach in a uniform role. He, you know, he might see five to ten minutes off the bench, but I don't expect him to really eat into the value of Randall or, or Mitch Rob. Let's hope so. Alex, take us to uh, Los Angeles for some surprising news. Last night, Spurs 
upset the Lakers 118 to 109. That snaps a four game win streak for LA. Guys, which an up and come excuse me, which up and coming spur do you like more? Keldon Johnson or Lonnie Walker? Shannon, we're gonna pass it to you first. Uh, it's it's KJ for me. Kel- Keldon Johnson's the guy. He's I would imagine locked into that starting small forward role for the rest of the season or smarty or power forward. I guess it just depends on whether or not they start um, Lamar Saldridge at the four or the five, which I think could be matchup based. Um, but I expect KJ to stick in the starting lineup even after Derek White returns and is back at full strength. Um, you know, I think we did a poor job. I, I will, I will, I will, Take I'll take part fault here. I, I did a poor job hyping Kelvin Johnson heading into the season. Um, you know, given the way he played uh, at the end of the last year um, in the G League, we should have been more. I should have been more on top of it. Uh, I think the breakout's legit. Lonnie Walker, meanwhile, I, I believe in Lonnie Walker. I think he's going to be a decent player in the NBA. He's a guy who could, <clears throat> if given a more expansive role, could certainly score. Um, and have good good scoring numbers, but they have Derek White coming back. They have they have Murray. You know they have other options. DeRozan, of course. So you have other twos and threes, other guards. And it's just going to be tougher for Walker, in my opinion, to really carve out a role once the Spurs are at full strength. That's big enough for fantasy purposes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, technically, DeRozan mm-hmm. could go to the three. But, uh, yeah, Johnson's the much safer play. Always going to get more rebounds, better percentages. And, hey, uh, 1.9 stocks over 30 minutes a game is something to really point out with Kelton Johnson. If you haven't picked him up, though, you've (laughs) probably missed the boat. He's rostered in 74% of Yahoo leagues. Uh, So Walker's the more available option. Uh, But, yeah, I think he he takes the, the crunch when Derek White comes back. Uh, but, hey, if you need threes, keep Lonnie Walker on your radar. I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you guys on that entirely. Um, so we'll move on. Uh, Ken, before we get into waivers, do you have a fun stat for us? Our, our our big dog, Pat Beverly, just had a fun stat through nine games. He's got 34 personal fouls and only six steals. <laughs> a little too grabby hands, like Shannon at the prom. Oh, <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> too easy. Too easy. Uh yeah, the, the Clippers backcourt's been a little weird. Um Lou Williams has not been playing well at all. Um and Beverly Beverly had one good game. I can't remember if he played well the other night. But um let's jump to the waiver wire. Could well uh, uh, Lou Williams, could age be finally catching up with him? I mean he is thirty four. I think so. Um, and also, like, bringing Luke Kennard in, I think, was kind of an effort on their part to... A big contract to Luke Kennard? Big contract to move on, potentially, from Lou Williams, who in the playoffs just isn't really a viable player. He gives up as much as he uh, scores, really. Yeah, age is certainly part of it. And then just role and need for that Clippers team. Um, you know, we're seeing Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi just played... Both both parts, uh, both halves of a back to back. They're not they're not relying on Lou Williams as much as they have the past few seasons, and and I don't think they're going to right. It, you know, also the addition to Kennard, the presence of even Nicholas Batum, right? Yeah, Nick Batum, Reggie Jackson. I mean, there's tons of there's tons of reasons. It, it's I actually think if the team needed. Lou Williams to come off the bench and score 18, 19 points per game. He still has it in him to do that, but, but it's just not, it's not the way they're currently set up. I mean, he only took four shot attempts in, in uh, the game on Wednesday night. Remember it's, the, it just reminds me of the rumors over the summer. Remember when uh, Kawhi had sort of said we could use a real point guard, uh, you know, and it was like, Ooh, throwing stones at Pat, Pat Beverly. But he probably had a good point. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, they they certainly could help from that. But, yeah, Lou, Lou Williams, I would say if you're in a deep enough league, it's worth holding on to him for a little bit longer. Um, but if it, if I'm in a 10- or 12-team league with uh, pretty shallow rosters, if, it, 
If I drafted him, I, I already cut bait. And this is a year when you need bench strength. I don't know if Lou's providing that. All right, let's move on. We've got our waiver wire picks. Our weekly. weekly Shannon, you weren't with us. Wire. We explained we are going to the format where it's always news, waiver wire, DFS, bye bye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start us off. All right, my first pick, I think this is the no, no brainer, must pick up, you know, top, top free agent option, Cole Anthony. Orlando Magic rookie uh, with Markel Fultz out uh, for the rest of the season, uh, season ending ACL tear. Cole Anthony is the guy. Um, he's most likely going to start, start at point guard for the rest of the season uh, for the or- Orlando Magic. Um, I think that he's, it doesn't mean he's going to just blow up immediately, but I do think he'll have solid value. Um, in most 12 team leagues, 10 team leagues, it may be more borderline. Um, but his per 36 numbers so far this season 14 and a half, 8.2, 5.7 assists, uh, not much on the defense end, and his three point shot uh, is not there yet. Um, same for field goal. I mean, overall, his field goal percentage is not pretty. Uh, 30% so far. That's just kind of uh, rookie, we'll call it rookie jitters, and hoping that. Uh, he finds a stroke here soon. I, I do think he's a great rebounding point guard, um, and he can get you a handful of assists. So he, he's worth an option in most 12-team or larger leagues. What's the first thing you need to do well in fantasy? Minutes. Cole mm-hmm. Anthony is going to get a ton of them. A technology cost me an Anthony pickup. I'm watching basketball on Twitter. See the Fultz news break on the Rotowire basketball Twitter feed. Switch over to the Yahoo app, and it's asking me to log in. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot my password. Ah. And I run upstairs to the PC because I know that's defaulted. By the time I get to the PC, the false owner in my grad school league picked up Anthony, shaking my fists. Anyway. Well, you need to be in weekly weekly fab leagues. Yeah, I know. Daily All the pickups. Other, this on. is my one daily pickup league, my one daily oh. pickup. That's the one I race to. The, the grad school guys are not worth arguing with. It's too much debate. It'll be 14 emails. <laughs> All right. Alex, who are you targeting for, for a free agent pickup this, this week? You know, I don't you know, mind. Alex, actually, should we explain our format for this? Oh, yeah, that's I, a good call. Yeah. We're well, gonna, I, I, each week, we're going to have two picks per person. One pick's going to be less than four, 50% managed or 50% or less. Like Cole Anthony's only in 40%. On 40% of leagues, is he on a roster? And then we're each going to have a long shot. And presumably, let's go through our less than 50% managed list first. Then we'll go through our long shots. Okay. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, and hey. Cole, Cole Anthony was my less than 50%. He's available. He's he's only owned in 40% of Yahoo leagues right now, so he's widely available. If you haven't dropped Fultz yet, that's, that's the guy to target. For me, uh, that guy... Less than 50% rostered, Bobby Portis, um, 90th ranked player on the season in 23 and a half minutes per game, averaging 11 and a half points, eight rebounds, 1.5 assists. He'll get you a three. He'll get you a steal and a block here or there. Um, you know, for the Bucks, he's a guy who's just going to eat minutes. Like the Bucks don't really have a backup center. They don't really have much of a backup like power forward situation. He's playing backup front court essentially for the Bucks, And he's a guy who, you know, I don't know how effective he's going to be when the Bucks get to the playoffs, but he will gladly eat 25 regular season minutes for you. And Not he will about play, shooting. He will play in garbage time, and he will fire up shots. <laughs> um, if you play him, he's he's. I know people are worried about playing him in DFS uh, because of the minute situation, but like he is he is extremely viable in fantasy right now, and I don't think that's really going to change if you like just take a look at the Bucks depth chart. And dare I say, Portis finally has some good coaching. He's had some bad coaching over the years. I feel like he's finally in a situation where they'll mold things to what he's good at in Milwaukee, teach him their inside-out game, as opposed to some of the terrible teams he was on in the past. I do I do have a couple of concerns. I agree. Port, Portis, if, if you're in a league deep enough to own a guy like Portis, like he does make sense. He's always been a per-minute monster. 
Um, he's going to get the 22 to 24 minutes that he's currently seeing. Um, I do worry slightly about the inflated shooting percentage. Maybe, you know, he's at 55%. He's a career 45% guy. Uh, maybe that's partially due to the fact that he's on a better team um, and, and he's getting uh, more efficient shot attempts. Um, that certainly could be part of it. Um, I, I, I like Porter in a deep enough league. We should yeah, state what? he's available in 53% of leagues. And yeah, his I, I'm with Shannon on his shooting percentage. It's not going to stay that high. But I will note that looking at his shot distribution, he's taking 42% of his shots at the rim compared to 27% last year. Uh, his corner threes uh, have doubled as a percentage of his shots, and his long mid-rangers are down. So he's, a better become offense. A more, he's become a more efficient player and a better offense. But the percentage as it is is probably still inflated. Yeah. Uh, Ken, who do you have? Uh, I'm going with, and this leads a lot to, or based a lot on the news we had before Shannon joined us, but uh, I put down Shake Milton because the Sixers have five games next week mm. and Seth Curry's injured slash COVID. But then the f- other side of this coin is, ooh, are any of Philly's games going to get uh, delayed or rescheduled? So maybe they're looking at a four-game week. Worst possible time to have COVID issues as you're about to enter a five-game week that presumably makes rescheduling a little hairy. But uh, he's rostered in 32% of leagues, has some a nice assist upside. Uh, and I'll say this longer term, too. Uh, could be in a more traditional role if they do trade for Harden as uh, the, the six or point guard with Harden at shooting guard, maybe. But uh, anyway, you and I, Alex, have liked Shake Milton as a flyer. Maybe it's better for deeper leagues, but uh, depending on how the chaos in Philly winds up, Shake Milton could be huge. I, I'm good with Shake Milton. I have him in our in our 14 team league. Um, he got off to kind of a slow start, but he's been picking it up lately. Uh, gonna definitely, have, I mean, he'll be really valuable on a five game week. And we should know by the time Sunday comes around, which is when most people's waivers are, or even on Monday. Um, w- w- what really what is going on with the 76ers and aren't those games going to be played and stuff like that so uh, keep an eye on that but I, I'm the definitely flip side here. is if they're played and they've got like three or four players well, out yeah. for safety protocol now Milton's minutes could go through the roof too so if you're looking at 30 plus minutes in five games ooh, me like it, could be, it could be Milton Dwight Howard if Embiid yeah. uh, remains really conservative Tyrese Maxey uh, someone, even Danny Green, potentially. Um, and hasn't the whole NBA been waiting for a Shake Milton, Dwight Howard pick and roll play? <laughs> <laughs> give, give us what we want. <laughs> We're going to start seeing a, a manual quickly Taj Gibson pick and roll. So. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on. Uh, Shannon, who is your long shot of the week? All right, my long shot of the week is uh, Juan Hernan Gomez for Minnesota, uh, currently promoted to the starting power forward spot. Uh, over the past three games, all starts, he's averaging 14 points, six rebounds, and 2.3 three-pointers. Uh, it's a role he had last year after being traded to Minnesota, and he averaged about 13 and 7 um, down the stretch. I... It's it's odd to me that uh, that he hasn't been picked up in more. He's owned in like less than ten percent of Yahoo leagues. He's a guy who is not worth a look in ten team leagues, but uh, certainly twelve, fourteen team leagues, or if you're in a league with a very deep bench, uh, he, he he does warrant consideration. Um, yeah, he's starting, and I think he can hold on to that starting role even after Cat returns. Uh, it's actually, you know, Ed Davis is the one starting at center um, in Cat's absence. So Hernan Gomez, the whoop, the Minnesota hasn't played well since he entered the lineup, and, and they're probably going to be kind of fluid uh, all year with with their starting five. Um, but he's worth at least a short term pickup while he is in the starting lineup. And hey, no long shot pick is going to be perfect. That's why they're long shots. There are two things I want to add to this. If you're running to the waiver wire for Juan Hernan Gomez, remember he has a brother in the NBA, Guillermo Hernan Gomez with the Pelicans. Do not pick up Guillermo. And I'll add, you know, you know who I'm surprised playing well for the Wolves, though you're right, they're playing terrible ball. But Vanderbilt's not doing too bad. Jared Van- Vanderbilt are also playing some with the power forward. Ten rebounds last night, if I recall. 
Yeah. Uh, I think he got double double, 10 and 10. So uh, I, I almost had Vanderbilt as my long shot of the week, but clearly minutes are available uh, in the front court for the T Wolves. Yeah, Van- Vanderbilt is interesting as well. He's, he's played 20 minutes each of the past two games. Um, the rebounds are good. Uh, this, the defensive stats is what's really appealing for him. Uh, he's got uh, seven combined stocks uh, over those two games. Yeah. It'll be, yeah, I mean, it's if, if we knew he were locked into, you know, 25 minutes per game, he would certainly be a very interesting option. He's a guy who, you know, in deeper formats, um, you know, if you ran out and chased after Nas Reed, uh, last week or when, or, you know, a week or two ago when Cat went down, uh, it might, you know, Vanderbilt might be the guy that you replace him with. I am one of those exact people that you are talking about. Uh, I, I lost Cat in our 14-team league, and I was like, well, I'm not going to let anybody else get Nas Reed's production, so I grabbed him. Thankfully, they're going to have to pay that much in fab, like $7 or something. Um, so I'm not feeling horrible about it, but he reads close to a drop for me at this point and, uh, might just stream the spot. And t- I mean, this is, I'm, I'll, I'll just jump to my long shot because this is a great week for streaming because the Pacers and the 76ers are on a five game week. Uh, Justin holiday again, five game week, TJ Warren's been out. He will remain out indefinitely. So you don't have to worry about holiday, you know, like seeing fewer minutes than he has been. Over the past week, Holiday is ranked 46th on a per-game basis in eight cat leagues, averaging 14 points, four rebounds, three and a half threes, two assists, 1.7 stocks in 35 minutes. Um, you know, I think we we know. I mean, we know who Justin Holiday is at this point. He's three and D. He's going to get you stocks. He's going to get you threes, um, and he'll get you some rebounds because uh, he's, he's just a solid player overall. But on a five-game week, he has to be, I think, on someone's roster um, as a streamer, uh, especially in a 14-teamer, for sure. Um, as a lo- Same with a lot of these Pacers guys. Like Doug McDermott, if you're in a 14-team league on a five-game week, could easily be in your roster. So um, I, I've I think, got a I question for you guys. Uh, regarding Justin Holiday. he's available in my daily pickup league. But the option would be, do I drop Justin Holiday? For Tyler Hero. I think you keep Hero, if that's what you're asking. That's what I can't. I can't let go of Hero, even though the average yeah. stats aren't great yet. But No, because if like if Jimmy Butler missed any amount of time, then Tyler Hero would be the guy. I mean, yeah. He would, yeah, he would. I love Hero's rebounding. I, I can't give up his rebounding. Love it. I'm stuck on his rebounding. I would have to be in an extremely shallow league to drop Hero. Um, like, it's... It's not going to happen. Yeah, it would, have to be, it would have to be like an A team. Yeah, A team league. I I don't I don't envision a ten team league scenario where I'm dropping him. Oh, uh, only reason, huge name. Only reason I bring it up, his average stats, and this is a TO league. He's one seventy five so far through seven games. Seven uh, games. Uh, yeah, seven, seven. Only seven games. Exactly. Seven games. So you have like two bad. And his free throw of... shooting's a little off early. It's not going to let be at seventy three percent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I, I would I would hold there. Uh, the five you know. the five game is just so that's why I pick up Milton. The five games of Holiday are so tempting, and I guess I have to say this again. Justin Holiday has two brothers. Drew Holiday, you're not getting. Uh, is it Aaron Holiday? I think. Don't yes. you don't you want Justin over Aaron Holiday? Who, by the way, are both on the Pacers. So be careful when you hit that plus button. Yeah, Aaron Holiday is actually the one who got who was promoted to the starting lineup uh, once T.J. Warren went down. Um, in those those four starts since his promotion, uh, Aaron Holiday is averaging five point five point five points, one point three rebounds, one point five assists uh, in twenty four minutes per game. Um, yeah, yeah, I, they, I the the Pacers' offense they just like with how well Oladipo has been playing, he's back. Brogdon's been playing out of his mind. Sabonis takes up an insane amount of usage. Like, there's just no room for yeah. Holiday when he's in that starting five to really be an impactful player. Yeah. All right, John. Uh, I'm they- going into my long shot. I really like it this week. Austin yeah. Rivers, available in 85% of leagues, mostly because he missed early games due to a groin injury. The Knicks guards are terrible. Last three games when Rivers came back healthy, he's played in four, but uh, the first game he was working his way back in. Last three games, 15.3 points, 3.3 threes a game. 
and I just hate the the backcourt depth on the Knicks. Uh, I love a long shot flyer on Austin Rivers. Picked him up in our keeper league. Um, uh, four games this week for Rivers. Anyway, there's my fun long shot, especially if you need triples. I'm with you on that. As long as Alec Burks stays out, um, that would be my immediate concern. Would be Alec Burks coming back. But Rivers has played well enough. You know these these past you know two games, or he's played enough minutes. I mean, he's 32 and 33 minutes. Hopped off last game. Um, definitely someone to consider because uh, you mentioned their their guards are terrible. Alfred Payton, not a confidence builder. Um, so. Yeah, in, in 14 team leagues, maybe some deeper 12 team leagues, I think Rivers is a streaming option while Burks is out. Uh, Burks is out until at least mid-January, um, so you've got at least another week, um, probably a little bit more than that for Rivers, but uh, I view him strictly as a streaming option. Okay, that does it for our waiver wire section this week. Let's swing into Friday DFS. Uh, quick reminder that all the prices that we're listing, is it, uh, position eligibility, it's all via FanDuel, although we may mention some DraftKings prices, Yahoo prices, if they are drastically different or there's a way better deal. 10 games late tonight. Um, highest over-unders are Washington at Boston with a 235 and a half over-under. <laughs> oh, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> Utah at Milwaukee with a 231 over-under. Those are the over-unders that have at least a 230. There are plenty of 220s on the slate. Main injuries. Okay, this is something you're going to have to pay attention to oh, because yeah. this Come is you. going to be a, an insane slate for injuries. So I wouldn't even consider putting something in the optimizer or throwing a lineup in there until like 30 minutes to an hour before tip-off, which is usually the case anyway. But today... Russell Westbrook, dislocated finger, is questionable. It's the front end of a back-to-back, so we shouldn't be surprised if he qu- uh, sits out because gets gives the finger a rest. As I, I've, got an up, I've got an update on Westbrook. Uh, this occurred during our recording. He is uh, no longer listed on the injury report. Really? Oh, so he's good to, he is good to go for Friday. Okay, cool. That, that is uh, odd, but okay. I liked your logic there, Alex, actually. But uh, I think I'll play him two games. would be really interesting. I've got him in a lot of weekly leagues. That'd be nice. Uh, Kyrie and KD both out. Uh, Steph Curry, questionable with an ankle. Christian Wood, questionable with a knee. De'Aaron Fox, questionable with a hamstring. Rashawn Holmes, questionable with an ankle. Evan Fournier, also questionable. Back injury. Joe Ingles, Achilles, questionable. For the Celtics, Robert Williams, Tristan Thompson, Grant Williams, out for seven-plus days due to COVID protocols. Uh, There goes whatever depth we had. Uh... Jeff Teague, questionable with an ankle injury. John Conchar, questionable with an ankle injury. And if you're wondering well, that, why that I'm Conchar, mentioning him. That Conchar news, critical. <laughs> hey, why are you mentioning him? 20, about 25 fantasy points over the past few games. Um, average, just because the Grizzlies suck. Uh, and are very hurt. Okay, so I'm going to kick things off very quick. It is impossible not to like Karis Levert again. Uh, his price did not change from last night. It's the second end of a back-to-back. He's 6,800. This time it's against the Grizzlies. Last time out, he posted 50 fantasy points despite shooting 22 of 20. Or he, he scored 22 points on 25 shots. So if he actually hit his shots yesterday, he would have went off for 60. And He's going to shoot either way. He knows any, this is one of these rare opportunity games. Do it. If there's anybody on a slate who can theoretically go for close to 10 times value on their price. They should probably be in your lineup. Um, this is a good point to point Use the lock option on the Rotowire you, optimizer. You can insist on a player being in by clicking on the lock logo. Please do so. I don't think you'll have to for Levert, for what we haven't projected <laughs> at. Um, but yeah. Uh, Ken, who do you have? Uh I got to go with that Boston Washington over under and all those missing players. I, you got to play at least two Celtics tonight. And number one is Peyton Pritchard, baby. Fast PP, B Rabbit. 4,500 on FanDuel. You're always looking for some cheapos. Jeff Teeks, questionable with an ankle. No Kimball Walker. Westbrook on the other side is playing. So that's interesting. I had him, you know, probably not playing. Uh, but honestly, I just wanted to yell out uh, Pritchard's nicknames. Uh, thank you. 
the the Celtics being shorthanded certainly is interested. Uh, Tatum and Brown, uh, if you're going with two more two of the more expensive guys, are are extremely yeah. appealing. Um, even da- Daniel Tice uh, with yeah. with the the rest of their front court absent. Yeah. Um, he is he's worth an. You gotta go one. Well. You gotta go one Brown or Tatum, and you're right, Tice. This might be the only viable. Well, there those guys are out for a whole week, but this might be the only week where Tice is a viable option, frankly. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm with uh, I, I'm with Alex Karis Levert. He was the first guy I plugged in my lineup. There's a lot of interesting options for tonight. Um, I also I like Brown. I like Tatum. I'm probably gonna try to get both of those guys in my lineup. Uh, I, I'm going to mention a homer pick here. Blake Griffin's dropped to 5,500 for, yeah. for for obvious reasons. You know, he's coming off a couple of very lackluster games, uh, but he's expected to play Friday. Uh, he he does have um, a 45-point outing under his belt this season, the second game of the season. He has it in him. And at 5,500, <clears throat> I mean, he's basically locked for like 20 to 25 points. And with the upside of going off for 50, uh, he's not totally washed. He's just had some health issues, some bad games. We'll see. I, I, I like that price point a lot for Blake Griffin. For me, the concern with Griffin is minutes right now. Um, we have him projected for 26. He played 26 last game against Milwaukee. Um, it's tough because he played 29 minutes in his last available game. I mean, it was 17. I mean, early in the season, he was 35 and 44. So I think there's room. Maybe we could bump him up. But um, I'm with you. Like, GPP play, I think someone – I don't think a lot of people are going to be on him uh, because there are so many potential value options opening up. Right. But Griffin himself at 5,500 is a value option, even if he plays 28 minutes, uh, let's say. Well, I, I will say the – so he had one left one game early because of injury. He played he played 35 and 44 minutes the first two games of the season. Then he left a game because he had some injury issues, uh, and then he had a blowout the game against Milwaukee where he the coming off the game against Milwaukee 26 minutes it was a blowout. That game was over halfway or two minutes in the third quarter. Um, so I actually don't view the minutes as that big of a worry. I mean, if you look at the fact that he left that that one seventeen minute game uh, because of injury concerns, right. and, and then the blowout concern. I mean, we're only looking at five games played. He's top thirty five minutes two out of those five times. So I think he's a as long as the game's competitive, I think he's a lock for thirty plus minutes. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I've actually updated that in our uh, for our projections now. So he should he should get bumped up a little bit. Um, and I do want to mention before I dive in a little bit more, we have a revised lineup optimizer this year. Oh, right. Uh, and I want to shout out Andrew Laird, especially, <laughs> and the tech people who worked on that um, for getting that up and running. Uh, personally, I think it's 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 been doing better this season. It spits out a lineup that I I use I always like. Right. Sometimes there's guys who I'm like kind of like eh, but they're at least viable. Right. And uh, Long story short, this season, um, we're doing something more like with usage, essentially. So when a player is ruled out, we distribute their usage to other players, not just minutes. Uh, so the optimizer is a little smarter about, hey, who's going to be a value play? So when Katie and Kyrie are out, it's not just that J- Karis LeVert's going to get more minutes. It's also he's going to get more usage. And now that's funneled into our optimizer, as is uh, defense versus position. That's all factored in. Um with that in mind, Cole Anthony, uh, $5,000 against Houston. We talked about that early in the waiver wire section. Listen, I don't love the matchup against John Wall, who has proven to be a good defender in the NBA. But again, uh, Anthony's averaging about a fantasy point per minute, despite shooting terribly. Uh, and he could easily see 30 plus minutes here. If Evan Fournier plays uh, at 5,300, he's, yeah, he's back, questionable. Yeah, back spasms. If he plays, uh, he's also a good play because 5,300 Markel Fultz is out Fournier. We know can handle the ball. can run some secondary pick and roll can get hot from three. So uh, I would say, keep an eye on that. I, my, my one concern with Cole Anthony is, is the price tag, right? Uh, $5,000 just seems like too much. Um, I'm not sure what he was at in, in prior to the Fultz injury, 
But I would be much more optimistic about sliding him into my lineup if he were like four thousand or four even forty five hundred. The five thousand dollar price point worries me somewhat. But but I do currently have him in my lineup. I like the matchup against the Rockets. Guys, I want to ask you some qu- center question. A center question. Uh, I did shove Daniel Tice in my lineup at a super cheap forty three hundred on Fanduel. But is it crazy to consider uh, Boogie Cousins at fifty three hundred? Woods questionable, and Cousins did have forty four fantasy points Wednesday. Uh, if if Woods out, then yeah. I mean, fifty four hundred or what is it for fifty three hundred? Fifty three hundred for Boogie. I'm okay with that. Um, he didn't play the amount of minutes that I think a lot of people are hoping he would. I think he played 23, uh, which was exactly what we had projected him for. So we actually felt pretty good about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know about his wind, his conditioning. But again, 5,300, if he gets 30 minutes somehow, then, I mean, he's, he, again, he's someone who's within reach of 50 fantasy points if, if he has the, you know, he'll get, the 10 rebounds with one, he'll get 10 rebounds with one Achilles in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, he. I mean, if Woods out, uh, I think Demarcus Cousins becomes he becomes the the automatic chalk play as center. Uh, forty four. That was forty four fantasy points that he had it on Wednesday. Uh, were essentially all in the first half of that game as well. Um, I was actually surprised he didn't play more minutes. Um, I would expect if Woods out again that they probably hand him some extra minutes this time. Um, yeah, I like Wood a lot. I, center, center's uh, very interesting tonight. Or you've got Cousins if Wood is out. You've got Daniel Tice that Ken mentioned. Uh, Mitchell Robinson still under six thousand dollars, fifty eight hundred. Um, you know, you've got Vucevic. He's eighty eight hundred, averaging forty three fantasy points per game. The Orlando Magic are going to have to lean on him even more heavily now with Markel Fultz out. Um, Jarrett Allen coming into his own. Uh, I just saw a very, uh, how can I say this nicely? Uh, Andre Drummond does not look very good out on the court. <laughs> and he's saying still, he shouldn't be handling the point. Yeah. Dr- Drummond, <laughs> Drummond is not, he is not very good at basketball. He's a tall, big man um, who has some athleticism, but he's not very good at basketball. And he, put up 20 and 15 with ease against the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, and you got Jared Allen going up against them tonight. He's, you know, after back-to-back uh, breakout games since entering the startup line, starting lineup, he's only 7,000 at a decent price. There are just tons of options at center, and, and you could throw one of, you know, nine of them my way, and I, I can get behind it. Hey, you know, I'll say this, though. Kudos to the Nets. They obviously just signed DeAndre Jordan to keep their stars happy at the time when they did it. But if it lights a, this kind of fire under Jared Allen, money well spent. Now, there's one more guy I think we should talk about uh, before moving on. Alex, this is one of the guys you're targeting. Yeah, come on, Alex. Do it. Go to Sacramento. Do it. Tyrese Halliburton, uh, 5,400. Uh, against Toronto here, Deer and Fox questionable. My guess would be that he doesn't play because hamstrings are kind of a risky injury to mess with. But Halliburton works even if Deer and Fox is in. Um, Halliburton is a guy who popped off last game when Deer and Fox uh, went out early with the hamstring. Uh, in 34 minutes last game, 17 points, seven rebounds, six assists, three steals, and a block. Uh, for the season as a whole, he's averaging basically one fantasy point per minute. Uh, and at 5,400, considering he's getting 21 minutes a game, or actually more than that. Um, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Um, he is getting 28 minutes a game. Uh, 5,400 should be fine either way. I'm a little worried about Toronto's defense. I should keep that in mind. Toronto's been terrible. We all know they've been terrible. But what the, the thing that has helped them win a game has been their defense. So it's not an ideal matchup, but it's a good price. I, I'm with you. If I... I, I'm not totally with you. I, I need Fox to be ruled out for me to go with Halliburton. Um, there are just other options that I like at, at, at shooting guard with Wilbert, Jalen Brown, where it's hard for me to justify moving off those options to go to Halliburton unless Fox is out. Um, yeah, you got to keep an eye on it. I, I know I saw a report uh, yesterday that the coaching staff or training staff was optimistic about Fox's chances of playing on Friday. Um 
but you know that decision is not going to be made until much closer to game time. Um, but if Fox is out, I'm 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 game. Give me Halliburton. Okay, uh, Ken. Do you have anybody else before we swing into your old man rant? Ready for the rant, brother? Let's do it then. Ah, in the name of all that's holy, how the heck did the Detroit Pistons wind up wearing the Michael Jordan brand on their uniforms last Saturday? That is sick and wrong. It's bad enough that former Piston Dennis Rodman ended his career with three straight Chicago Bull championships, but now the Pistons are wearing Michael's logo on their uniforms? I can assure you, Bill Lambeer is not walking around Michigan wearing Air Jordans. The Isaiah Thomas-led Pistons and Michael's Bulls hated each other. This is a slight on hoops history. Did anyone see the last dance? Joe Dumors, Rick Mahorn, and John Sally should be protesting around the rubble of the palace at Auburn Hills. Side note here, in 1992, I saw Frank Sinatra live at the palace. It was glorious. Theater in the round. Shirley McLean opened the show. Frank was 77 years old. I had about 30 bourbons. It was awesome. But I digress. Remove the Jumpman logo from Pistons uniforms ASAP! Ah! Uh, Ken, you just like sounded like you're about 40 years older than what you actually are. It was ah! uh, that that Jumpman logo, just so everyone knows, appeared on all 30 NBA teams for their alternate uniform. It's that's just the way it was. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's, it's just saying. It's not like the Pistons wanted it on there. It appeared on every single NBA jer- alternate jersey. And they clearly didn't want it on there because it wasn't. It was the same exact color as the jersey. Like they tried to make it. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 when we put the pod article up, I'll I'll show via a tweet uh, the how it is. But it was definitely there, and that is wrong. Whoever I writes think, the contracts needs to have a little more NBA knowledge. It's just unacceptable. Uh, Shannon, you could not have been happy as a. I business. didn't care. I honestly did not care. Uh, they need like a an that alternate 20, logo. It was Go over ahead, twenty Jay. years ago. I was like, it was almost thirty years ago. It, Your it was thirty is, years ago. Thirty uh, years. I don't care. My stomach bile is moving in a negative manner. The Let's Pistons go to mispronounced need, names. They need an alternate logo with like a lamb beer elbow sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. See, that would have been uh, such a better answer, Shannon. Such a better answer. Good job, Alex. Kudos. You're an honorary Pistons fan. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no one. No, no one. I hate. Listen, I lived through enough being a Bucks fan for the mid and early 2000s. I did my part. Uh, no, I don't think there were any mispronounced names today. Um, we Immaculate. One, one you know, it it helps when the it helps when Ken's waiver wire targets were Milton and Rivers, and I had Portis and Holiday, and Shannon had Anthony. Uh, as well as Hernan Gomez, uh, that definitely <laughs> helps keep things uh, thing keeps things clean. So thank you everybody for joining us on the Roadwire Fantasy Basketball Podcast. It is presented by Bet MGM and Owners Box. Ken, take us out of here. Let's go to Cleveland, the land where NBA beat writer Joe Varden, now at the Athletic, said this about Kyrie Irving calling or LeBron when Kyrie was struggling with the Celtics. Joe said, "Quote." Kyrie changed the course of history in Cleveland because he was done with LeBron. Then Irving calls two seasons later to apologize? For Cleveland, this is like the worst last two-minute report ever. Attention, passengers! This three-car fantasy train wreck has hit the end of the line. (laughs) 